This is Nakanwaji Annette, not real names. Annette lives in Nakulavie, a stone's throw away from Uganda's capital. Annette is a young person with a gripping sad story. She was defiled. I was working with my mother. Then the man came and told me I take food where he stays. When I took food where he stays, he told me to enter the house. Me, I knew he told me to take the food inside the house. When I, I, when I took the food inside the house, he caught me from there. Annette got pregnant from this defilement. By the time I got pregnant, she was in the village. I got scared to tell people who were near me because I knew they were going to talk about me a lot. I kept quiet. I didn't tell my mother. She kept the pregnancy and we were curious to know why she opted not to abort. Did she know about abortion medical self-care? Was abortion ever an option for her? Our senior woman used to tell us at school, when you get pregnant when you're young, you can abort. But when you're, new, when you're on your own risk, so I tell my mother that let us abort, I said that I can go back to school. She told me, no, if you want to go back to school, you can keep your pregnancy after giving birth, you go back to school. Unfortunately, Annette is just one among thousands of children defiled every year in Uganda. The annual police crime report of 2021 shows a sharp increase in defilement cases with 14,436 children defiled in 2021, up from 14,134 cases reported in 2020. Unfortunately, only a small fraction of these cases, 6,191, is taken to court. We spoke to Maureen Atuhaire, the Commissioner, Child and Family Protection Department of the Uganda Police, on the challenges they face in the investigation and prosecution of GBV cases and what needs to be done. Not all the cases are reported at police. When they report, they are this, uh, the, the same people who uh, come back and say we have sorted our cases, uh, we are no longer interested. But in some other cases, the victims are intimidated by perpetrators, they are threatened. The few who, who choose to come to police are either uh, seeking like for redress but outside court or they just want to report a case and use you as police to maybe ask for compensation. But even the cases that are reported at police, they do not see, uh, them, uh, they don't go through the system at court. The challenge is that we do not have shelters at police, uh, 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 at many police stations, where you can be able to hold them temporarily as you conduct your investigations because you need a safe kind of environment where the victim is going to open up and tell you what exactly happened, but also the distance between where the uh, crimes are committed and the stations is quite um, a, a long distance. So it becomes hard for them to transport themselves, uh, to keep on following up the cases, but to also to go for medical examination. Dire as her situation is, she is one of the lucky ones to have gotten help. Many of her colleagues end up falling prey to unsafe abortions, with some even losing their lives as a result. And sometimes they end up making decisions they would never have made. She will decide to go and carry out an abortion. And most times once they opt for abortions, they opt for the unsafe abortion. It means they're going to go to a quack doctor. It means they're going to follow all the myths that they hear about abortion of you can take jig, you can take omo. I believe unsafe abortion is a form of gender-based violence. At a policy level, Uganda's guiding document on fighting gender-based violence is the national policy on the elimination of gender-based violence in Uganda, domiciled at the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development. The ministry has also put in place a number of legal and policy frameworks that are in line with global and regional human rights frameworks. We spoke to Anish Nakafero from the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development on why, in spite of the elaborate legal and policy framework, we continue to witness increasing cases of gender-based violence. Much as we have the laws, we have the policies that are really very strong we are yet to transform our social norms and practices. 
values have not changed much. We still see child marriage being celebrated. We still see cases of uh, female genital mutilation still going on. We are, with, we are now waking up the realities of cyber violence. What needs to be done to reverse the situation? We need to pay equal attention to mobilizing men and boys. Male engagement in terms of preventing and responding to GBV is very, very critical. We are also reaching out to other government ministries and departments to support our work. Most of our interventions we've adopted a mouth sectoral approach and our work is mainly focusing on coordinating these other entities to support the prevention and response to gender-based violence in this country. Sports will all have a role to play. Men have a role to play, women have a role to play, religious institutions have a role to play, even our cultural institutions really have a big role to play in terms of social norm change. Generation equality which brings us to Uganda made a number of commitments during the Generation Equality Forum in Paris. But how do we intend to use these as a launchpad to end gender-based violence? We've also made some milestones. We've mobilized resources for GBV prevention and response. We are improving service delivery. I'm glad to inform the country that uh, we are, with the support of our development partners under the EU UN Spotlight Initiative, we've uh, increased the number of GBV shelters that are aimed at ensuring that the victims and survivors of GBV get quality services. In terms of the justice sector, there's a lot of improvement because uh, previously we had challenges in terms of uh, managing cases, reported cases of GBV. The courts of law have improved the rate of conviction up to 75%. So as a country, we are in the right direction in terms of delivering our commitments under generation gender equality. Meanwhile, Annette is now back in the same community and working the same job of delivering food to the clients in this area, even if one of these clients defiled her four months ago. Every year, the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence are commemorated internationally from 25th November to 10th December. Stories like Annette's are a constant reminder that the world needs to indeed unite in activism to end violence against women and girls. Girls like Annette.